Hi guys, I'm David Dispinette with Media Unlocked, and today we're going to be talking about another data color product. Um, today we're going to be looking at the data color spider cube, which is going to be this item right here at the top, and then the data color spider checker. Now what do these two items do? They help you get proper white balance and exposure. Now we're going to talk how that actually works. We have Bill sitting behind the camera, so he's going to be taking shots for us today. Hi guys. <laughs> there he is. Uh, he decided to take a break from being in front of the camera. He just doesn't look as good in front of the camera. As These I two are much prettier than I am. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> much prettier. Um, so he's running, he's running, he's actually going to take pictures. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk you guys through how this item works and why you might actually need this. Now this will work outdoors or indoors. Bill and I mostly use it in the studio is, is really what we use it for to help one balance um, our, white, our white balance, to get the proper white balance on the model so we can get the right skin tone of our model. Um, getting the wrong, wrong skin tone, especially when you're doing commercial work, is just really, really frustrating and it can almost be impossible to fix, as Bill will probably tell you <laughs> in Photoshop. You can always try to recreate it in post, but then you're trusting your memory and if yours is bad as mine, it's not gonna So this is where the spider um, the data color spider checker really comes in as well as the cube. It's also going to help you with your exposure. So even though that we've preset all the lighting up um, and we'll show you a behind the scenes shot right now, um, it's going to have the video equipment and the photography equipment as um, far as the, the lighting that we're using for both video and photography. But it's, it's um, we, and we already preset all of our lighting up, but this is what you're going to use to help get proper, um, again, exposure, white balance, um, as well as key light. And it's really cool because you had this little piece up here, we're going to talk about it, and it's going to help you out with key light. So let's talk about how this item works. So we open it up, and a few things to talk about. Um, one, it does have a piece at the bottom, and we'll kind of bring in this. So what I can do is actually set this up. If I don't have someone to hold it, and I can't bring someone in to hold it, we can put it on this light stand here. And the idea is that when you're taking a shot to start working on your white balance and proper exposure is you want to put it in front of the model where the light's coming in. Now we have a 45 degree angle, so we have a light coming in right here. And we have a light coming in over here, as well as we have a reflector over here. The reflector is not bringing in a bunch of bounce light, so we're not that worried about the reflector. So again, we can throw it on a tripod. That is an option, which is fantastic. I just love that it does that. As well, the cube at the top does the same thing. It has a little piece that pops out, and what we can do is we could disconnect the cube, and we could put the cube on the tripod as well. And I'm not going to take it all the way off because it's going to take me a second. Um, but, so we could unscrew the cube at the top and then put it on the light stand if we wanted to, or a tripod. Um, that's an option. Another option is you could just have your model hold it. Just let them know they don't want to touch the colors because the oils of your fingers, if they get onto these colors, are going to cause wrong color balance. It can be an issue. So again, we can have the model hold it. And then what I would do is, Melissa here, um, I would have her hold it and I would be like, I'm going to move this up over here and I'm just going to have her hold it here so that we're getting, again, our light here and our light here are going to be bouncing, and we're probably going to angle, angle, let's angle it a little bit more, so that we're getting the proper lighting to actually hit the color checker. Dave, can I ask you a few questions real quick before yeah. you put it away? How do I know when I need to uh, check and replace my color palette? So that's another thing to talk about. You have this little red piece here, and as it fades, you're going to, this little red piece is going to let you know when it's time to actually change out these actual pieces. So these pieces will physically pop out right here and we can actually pull them out and change out the actual pieces. Um, the color checker uh, by Data Color, uh, Spider Color Checker by Data Color, I believe is about $110 and the cube goes for about $65. Now there's this hole in the bottom of the cube. Is that a manufacturing defect? It is not and we're going to actually kind of dive into that. It's fine, Bill. We'll go on and talk about it because I know you get excited. Um, so you do have a, a, a black hole and so the black hole is supposed to be all, the, as dark as it gets, as black as it gets, so that when you're looking at your exposure, it's, it's going to let you, especially when you're using Lightroom, it's going to get, if you turn on your exposure and we'll pop up, we're going to actually pull up some of these images that we're taking today in Lightroom so you can physically see me edit them and kind of go over this a little bit more specifically. But this black hole is going to let you know when things are getting too dark in your shot. So wait a minute, so if I'm using my camera raw filter and I'm hitting my Alt button. Alt or option for Alt or, oh, Macintosh. <laughs> if I hit my Alt button, 
You mean that's gonna tell me where the exact black point is so I get that perfect deep black in every single print? That is correct. So what, wow. you, what you do, if you're using camera raw, is you'd hit alt, and when you slide to the left, as it gets darker, it's gonna, it's gonna let you know when it's too dark. Now, you that can accept that. You can accept that if you like it or not, but it works really, really well, and we use it all the time. Now, same thing works. The disco with, ball! <laughs> well, we could talk about the disco ball. Disco ball has to do with your catch light. Um, as well as you have your white on your cube, and it's gonna work same as your black. It's gonna work for your white, where as you hit Alt and on your white, you go right um, in Lightroom and right as well in Camera Raw, and it's gonna let you know when you're going overexposed in the section. So when this starts to get that red, is it, actually, I never yellow, use Camera Raw. It's yellow it, and camera raw. Is it yellow and Camera Raw? Because I always use Lightroom. Um, so it's going to let you know yellow is going to start coming up on the cube and it's going to be like, okay, now this is becoming overexposed. In Lightroom, it is red um, and it is blue for black in Lightroom. So as you're getting darker, you're hitting you know, Alt or Option and sliding to your right on the black slider in Lightroom, it's going to start getting blue and letting you know that's when it's becoming underexposed. Makes it too easy to find the true white and true black it, points. And this is what's so cool. It makes it so easy. You don't have to sit there and play with it and see what your eyes think, step away, come back. You can just use this. Now, let's take it one step easier. How, would it, how nice would it be if you could take a little dot paintbrush and hit the gray right here and it would just automatically change your light or your white balance, your light balance. <laughs> May the light balance be with you. Uh, your white balance. So that's a really cool thing. It's a perfect 18% gray. And you can take your little, your little checker dot. Um, and I'm going to show you that again in Lightroom. We're actually going to show you how to actually physically use this. I'm not just going to explain it to you. I'm going to show you guys how to use this so you can follow along if you have one of these. And if you don't, you should totally get one. Um, and it's going to, you're going to take it, you're going to put, a, put your thing here, and it's going to automatically white balance it for you which is fantastic. Now, you could get away with just using the cube. I have both options. And Bill and I were actually talking about this earlier, why you may want the spider checker and the spider cube as well. Um, the, the spider cube does a lot of everything you need. So if you wanted to just use the cube, again, you could take this little piece and you could just dangle it in front of the model and then take your shot. But the, the data color spider checker allows you to have a little bit more variation with your color. If you don't like the white balance that it gives you, you have other options of gray that you can select. Um, or other actual color options. If you wanted to go purple and you wanted some unique look, you're going for something very specific, um, you know, very edgy, artsy. Um, this is where you could start playing around with some of these other colors in Lightroom or Camera Raw and be changing the color tones of your image. So having the both of them together, I think, really works well. So let's start taking some pictures. Um, I'd like to introduce our model, Miss Melissa. She was kind enough to drive an hour and a half down here to come help us out today. Yay! Uh, yes, Facebook is amazing. Yes. Um, so <laughs> Melissa has an Instagram, if you'd like to give them your Instagram. So if they're interested in following along and contacting you for maybe future jobs, or if you just want to follow a model along, she's awesome. She's a lot of fun to work with. So Melissa? Absolutely. Please follow me. It's Model Melissa Cox. So it's Model Melissa Cox. We'll throw that up on the screen. Uh, Bill, you ready to take some pictures? I think it's a good idea. So, so again, guys, uh, we'll show a behind-the-scenes shot right now. Uh, we'll cut to, and, um, and you'll actually be able to see, again, we have a light over here, 45-degree angle hitting her roughly here, and then we have using a grid, um, and then we have, it's almost like a gridded snoot. Uh, what, what, what is the, what is the leg design? I've got a Profoto B1, which is right. on camera right, David left. The B1 is a lovely TTL piece of uh, equipment. It's it amazing. Great. We've got a three by four softbox on the front of it. The camera left, I'm using a Profoto B2, which uh, I like the combination of the B1 and the B2 because the B1 is 500 watt seconds, the B2 is 250, which is gonna give me a really nice shadow gradient on her face. Uh, what's, what we should get coming out of this is a brighter side camera, camera right, her left, moving into the shadows on her, her side camera right. So, again, the idea is that we've got light coming in here, light coming in here, so where do we need to have this? Now, the nice thing about the cube is, and you can angle, angle the checker as you needed so that you're kind of hitting the light, right? But with the cube, it has all the way around, so the light is going to be hitting it from both directions wherever you've got it set up. So if I have Bill take a shot here, and I'm going to have the model hold it right here, Miss Melissa. And Bill, how did that look? Did it look like both your lights are going to hit that just yeah. right? 
We might, we might need to angle it just a tad bit, I think, over here, so we're hitting this here. Well, why don't we check it from different angles so you can see how the light affects yeah. it. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to step out of the shot because I'm actually blocking. Um, I'm phys physically blocking some of the light that's <laughs> And Melissa's to hit prettier it. anyway. She really is. I'm <laughs> pretty you. ugly next to her. So, um, And what I'm going to have Melissa do is I'm going to have you, and we'll start over here to your left, and you'll, as he takes a shot, we're just going to keep moving it till we get a full half circle here. Okay. Um, 180 degrees, and then uh, we'll be able to, what we'll do is when we're in Lightroom, uh, hopefully we'll be able to kind of, you guys will be able to see a little bit of how the white balance differences. So I'm going to step out of the shot, let the beautiful Melissa do her thing, and I'll step back in, guys. Okay. There's one. Uh -huh. Rotate around. Rotate around straight on. Go to your left, or your right, I'm sorry. <laughs> And one more, and one more. Good. All right, so take this back. Thank you very much, Miss mm -hmm. Melissa. So the idea is that as she moved, really only one of those shots where she was pretty much right here, where both lights were hitting it, so we were able to get a good idea of the exposure um, and the gray um, so that we can actually get our white balance correct, um, was probably here. When she was all the way over here, uh, again, the nice thing is with the cube, we could still kind of cheat a little bit because we're still getting light hitting here and this light is still going to hit here. So the, I do like the cube a little bit better than the, the spider color checker um, because the cube does give me a little bit more uh, room to work with if the model's not holding it or you're not paying attention and the light is not hitting it directly. But again, I felt like when we were sitting roughly right here, this is when the light was going to hit properly and we're able to really go in and make sure our white balance is going to be correct. Again, we could select from up here in the gray, or we have this option, 18% gray right here, and then we could pick off of that if we didn't like where that was going. So this is our review of the Spider Color Checker and the Spider Cube, and both we think are very important, especially for studio photographers. Now this will also work um, if you are out in the field. Again, you've got to think where is your light source coming, because wherever the light's hitting, and wherever you're focusing on, so wherever you're lighting the subject. So if you're using it to shoot any number of different things, but we'll just say a model because we've got one in front of us, and we are focused on hitting her face, maybe her waist up. So we want to make sure where well, we've got that light directed, that's where we want that light hitting both of these items right here, the spider cube and the spider color checker. Now, if the light's not hitting both of those properly, you're probably going to get a bad white balance when you go in to check that and fix it in Lightroom. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to Lightroom. I'm gonna pull up these pictures and we're, gonna, we're not gonna go into some in-depth editing. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna point out how the over and underexposed works, how we can use this with our white balance so we can actually properly white balance, how all that works in Lightroom and uh, then we'll jump over to Camera Raw for, real quickly just to show you how it works in Camera Raw as well. So thanks for stopping in and enjoy this little light, Lightroom segment on how to actually properly use it once you've got the photos. Hey, Melissa, now that we've got you set up under a perfect exposure, you want to take a few pictures? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> See you guys soon. We have now uploaded the photos into Lightroom, and we're going to show you how the cube and the, the spider cube and spider checker work with Lightroom and we'll briefly jump into Photoshop to show you a few things with it using Camera Raw, which again, Lightroom is a beefed up version of Camera Raw in my opinion. I mean, really honestly, that's what it is. But it's really easy to use. So we brought the photos in, we've gone into develop mode up here at the top and we're gonna look at some photos here. And so what we did is we had two different light sources, if you remember from the video. And, uh, and if you remember, we had the model move it all the way around again, so that we could get different light. And depending on where the light fell, you're actually going to get a different white balance because the idea is, is that the spider cube and spider checker are getting hit by both lights the way that the light is actually hitting the model, therefore giving you the best possible way to fix your white balance, your under and over exposures. So, uh, right here, again, we're getting the cube is getting light from the right side of the model where the checker is getting most of its light from the left side of the model where the light is set up. If we go to the second photo, again, 
the cube is again hitting just just by the right side of the light the spider checker is getting hit by most of the left a little bit of the right side of the model's light because again we had two lights shooting the model if you guys remember if not go back to the video and you can actually see the light set up when we cut to it a few times throughout the video uh, right here is going to be where the cube and the spider checker are both probably getting the right amount of light hitting it so this is the shot that you're probably going to want to use to balance your under under and over exposure and you're going to want to balance your white balance um, as well once once we've made these adjustments you can copy and paste this in Lightroom and long as the lighting has not changed and the subject has not moved you can copy and paste this to all of your subjects for that specific shot so if you use a studio lighting setup then you'll be able to use this um, this preset over and over again, especially for this very for that shoot that you use it in, because your lighting is the same, and you don't have to go and do you don't have to use the you don't have to use the color checker for like every shot. You copy it, copy the settings, and you would paste it to the rest of the photo. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute as well. So let's start off with if you have this guy right here so we're going to be in develop mode and this is our white balance right here I'm also going to have both of these turned on right here in the histogram we're going to talk about those in a second and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my my little piece here and if you notice over to the the left right here as I move this around look how it's changing the picture now I haven't actually clicked. Once I click, it will actually make that adjustment. So if I click right here, it's going to look just like this photo over here. So we hit Command Z, go back. I can grab this guy and we do this. Now I find the best way to make sure that 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 this works is to actually zoom in on the area. So we're going to zoom in right here. And so this is our gray. And if you notice, this gray is a little bit lighter than this gray. So the lighting is a little bit different. So you are going to have to make a decision on which side you're going to want to click. Now, if you notice over to the right, it's a little bit different. And I'm probably going to click on the left side here. And I'm going to try to find one where most of my grays are balanced out. I could click here as well. So I'm going to click on this. Zoom out and it's made a change. Now if I hit Command Z, you can kind of see the change a little bit. We will zoom back in. And now my white balance has been set. Now, if I don't have the spider cube and I have the spider checker, we can use one of these guys down here. And we can click on here. And then zoom back out. And there you go. If you notice, these numbers are changing. So we'll hit Command Z. So you can notice it's at 5200K and plus 5 on the tent, right? So if we use this again and we go for this, let's say, now we go to 6550K Kelvin temperature and only one on the tent and we zoom back out. So that is how you do the white balance. It's extremely simple. Um, and you can and you have the option to use any of these other colors um, or these different shades of gray depending on which one because it, it really comes down to you're a photographer you're an artist so you can pick what you want the idea is that this is just going to help you get there more accurately and it gives you more options on how to get there which i absolutely love now let's talk a little bit about the rest of the cube let's talk about the white here and the black here now if you if we have this hole right here and this is supposed to be like a pitch black hole right so no lights getting into that hole and we're going to use that so since i have both of these checked up here in the in the, each corner in the histogram so let's scroll down and let's move our whites so as you can see as as the red comes in that's letting me know stuff is getting overexposed right so right at 36 i start getting overexposure here another way we can do this let's take this back down to zero let's hit option or alt for pc option for mac we're going to hold that down now we're going to click white and now our screen is going to go black right so as we cut to the right we're going to start seeing where lightroom thinks things are going overexposed but we're really looking for that little cube right and there it starts to come in right at 36 
Now, if we go too far, now we've got that white cube, and that's where it's letting us know we're going overexposed. So I'm going to stop right there on that line, which is around 36. And I'm just going to actually put that in manually. And we're going to do the same thing for black. Again, if we move our blacks to the left, it's letting us know that we're getting a lot of over underexposure, right? Things are becoming too dark in the shot. So what we want to do is we want to get it right where the it comes right in, right around 14. We can, again, put it back to zero. Hit Option, Mac, Alt, PC, hold it down, click on black, and start seeing where it's coming in right here, right? So we want to get it right where it starts to come in right there at like around 11. Come out, and now we have a pretty well-balanced shot. Now, again, it comes down to your eyes. If your eyes are telling you that it doesn't look as good as you'd like it to, go in and adjust it. Maybe, we, uh, maybe it's a little too bright still, so we bring down our highlights a little bit. Now... To me, maybe the shot is the white balance doesn't work. I actually like where the white balance is at, but maybe for you, I could see it does look a, tint, a tad bit gray, right? So let's go grab this, and let's see if we can find a better white balance that we're more comfortable with. That warmed it up some. That warmed it up even more. Again, we can zoom back in here. We'll drop that back in. We can hit the zoom, and let's go pull it from here and see how that looks. That actually looks pretty good to me. And that's how you use this thing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to reset this photo back to norm. We're going to, for Mac, if you're not using a, um, a mouse, we're just going to right click, which is hold down control and click on the photo. And we're going to edit this in Photoshop. And we're going to go into Camera Raw. And I'm going to show you how you use the under and over exposure uh, aspect in Camera Raw, which is very simple. Let's take a second to open up. All right. Now what we want to select is uh, we want to go into filter and we want to go into camera raw filter. And again, this is going to work pretty much the same way. We're going to go down to whites. We can hit down option so or alt for PC. And as we cut to the right, we're going to start seeing where the overexposure comes in. Again, we can also turn these guys on here so we get the same thing as Lightroom. And they're just going to be different colors. So we can start to see where that overexposure comes in. And for here, it's 38, so roughly about the same. And I bet you it's around 11 for blacks. And for this one, it says negative 7, so we actually want to keep it right around negative 2, according to this. So it's going to be a little bit different than Lightroom. It works really, really well. And here's your little dab here, and you can use that to do white balance as well. Um, you can also zoom in if you need to. Let's go to 200%. Let's grab this guy, and let's scroll up here so that we can actually see. And then we can do that like there. And then we can fit to view. Very, very simple stuff. The Spider Checker, Spider Cube, super easy to use. Both amazing pieces of equipment to have, especially if you're a studio photographer. It's, it's a must, in my opinion, because it takes you, gives you that extra little percent of edge over your competitor, we'll say. So if you and another photographer are doing the same exact type of shooting, your lighting looks very similar, and you have one of these, and they don't. In my opinion, your photos are going to look a tad bit better. Thanks for stopping in, guys. We'll catch you next time. Hey, guys, if you've made it this far. Might as well go on and subscribe because you know this channel is awesome. We have great information and beautiful models. I'm just saying. Uh, go on and hit subscribe down here. The newest video will, of course, be right here. And if you guys would like to go check out this and maybe purchase it, it does help us out a little bit. The Spider Cube and the Spider, Spider Color Checker, there will be a link down here in the bottom left corner for you guys. Thanks for stopping in. And as always, we'll catch you next time.